My name is Joe, and this is Focus with Joe. In this video, I want to show you how I've set up my Notion. I've been Notion, using Notion for a couple of months now, and it's really supercharged my productivity. I just love the way that you're able to configure it completely the way that you want it, the way that it works for your brain, as well as make it aesthetically pleasing. So uh, let's dive into the setup. I have set up my space using the para method, which means that over here I have a page called data, which contains a couple of master databases. Uh, in accordance with Parla, I have projects, areas, resources, and over here an archive. And then I also have an additional tasks master database. The resources consist out of a couple of different databases, and we're going to get into these as we see them used in the space, because I never ever access them through here. I always access um, the versions that I've embedded into other pages. So how do we get there? Uh, the starting point of my space is this dashboard, and these are my main pages. And in there, I've embedded version, versions, filtered versions of those data uh, bases. So let me show you how that works. Uh, first of all, I rarely use the sidebar over here, which is why it's hidden. Rather, I use this block, global block over here. So these uh, emojis link to the same pages that you can find over here. And this block is the same on every single one of my pages. So when I click into my university page, you can see the global block when I click into my media page, same thing, and so on and so forth. So that's how I navigate through the space. And then I also always have a link to the current week. Um, so I guess we can start with the week because that's where I spend most of my time in my Notion setup. I don't think I can go through everything with how I've set this up, but I'll talk about the basics. So every week I create a new one using a template and then that generates um, essentially what this looks like. I connect it up to the month, to the days, and then I can see what I've read throughout the entire week. And then this is an overview of the tasks. So I can see my current projects. I don't have any personal active projects right now, but I do have a view of my subjects as well with a progress bar to easily see for which classes I still have work to do. Then this is really uh, the main part that I use. So these are my upcoming tasks. So this is filtered to today's tasks. And if I want to see a view for tomorrow, I can toggle this, see tomorrow or next the next seven days. I can also see a view of my university tasks specifically in case I wouldn't want to see the clutter of my personal tasks as well. Then since I use the loosely use the GTD method as well, I also have a view for next actions here and a backlog just in case I haven't filled in any metadata so that I don't lose track of that. And then just a view to see uh, what I'm waiting on. Then over here is my class calendar. So this is my class calendar database, which wasn't found over here, uh, but can be found in my university space, which I'll show you later. But this is filtered to today's classes. So I can see which class I have uh, for which subject, subject and whether it's on campus or online. And then I also have a view of my inbox over here. So if I ha I'm working in this space and there's new tasks or new ideas, they'll all go in here. And everything that I uh, clip from the web, such as articles and videos, will also go in here. And I'll process those later, which I will also show you. Then I have this view for habit tracking. Um, so I can just tick off my habits and then I'll get a percentage and then a correlating emoji. So this will change depending on how much I've done. And then I also have an Indify widget with my Google Calendar. Um, so that's where I spend most of my time. Then let me show you how I process my inbox. Oops, that's over here. So my inbox will populate over here, and then I will drag and drop it into the correct uh, database. So 
So if I put a task here, I'll drag it over here, projects over here, and then as I fill uh, them up with metadata, they will disappear from these views. So this is where articles would go, um, resources, that type of stuff. Um, so then let me show you some of my pages. This is my university page, which first of all has, this link is where the uh, university databases are stored, which has my subjects, my class calendar, and a, um, a database for readings. So over here we can see an embedded view of the subjects showing the subjects of this semester only. And I like seeing it in a gallery view with the colors because I always color code my classes. Let's open up one of these classes to see what it looks like. So I just have filled in the type of examination, whether it was a compulsory course or not. Um, and then I have all of my lectures linked to it. So let me show you what that looks like. That's the class calendar with all upcoming lectures. And then in there is where I write my class notes. Let me show you. Here we go. So this is where I write my class notes. Um, and then over here I have the syllabus with some um, explanation on the examination and the course material I need. This is for COVID because now we have to um, Register if you want to go to on class uh, on campus class. And then I also have a view for the tasks for that subject so that I um, always know if I have anything to do when I'm in that view. Then I also have a separate one for my thesis. I'll get into that in a second. But then I also have views of the class calendar showing the next week of classes as well as I think yeah all um, tasks I have left to do for anything related to university. So then my thesis uh, view, I am using Obsidian to store my sources and work with them, but um, this page in Notion uh, is mostly for these resources. So I have a resources database and this pulls in all of the ones that are relevant for my thesis. And then I have another view of the class calendar, filter to only tasks for the thesis, so I can see at a glance what I have to do. And then um, these are just some things I'm still experimenting with. The thesis hasn't started yet, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing yet. For example, I have this a section called brainstorm, which is when we got all of the subject that we could choose from. I plug the Excel file in here and I just um, set up some ways to select which ones I wanted. And I gave them a top three so that I could submit it. That worked really well, well for me. So that was the university space. Then I have my knowledge lab. So my knowledge lab is where I have a bunch of views of my media database filter to the articles and videos that I still have to, to read and the ones that I still have to process. So first I read them and processing means that they go into the Knowledge Lab database. So what does that mean? Uh, this is from the August Bradley system. So what it means is that I just take notes from them um, in the Knowledge Lab so that I have one synthesized place of all of those notes from multiple sources. And then I also have views over here to see everything related to it, media. So as you can see, these are the ones, the done ones are the ones that are, um, you can see in here. Um, let me show you another example, which may be a little bit more clear and note taking. So I did some research on some tools. So Obsidian you can find over here. All of the notes I've taken on Obsidian from different sources are all in here. Same for room research. I also have information on Zettelkasten. So that's what the Knowledge Lab is for. It's just a synthesized place for all of my notes. Then I have a resource view. The most important part of this is my tech stack. 
So I have used the CL software that I like or am interested in and the category that they're for. And then I also have used for other resources, just websites and that type of stuff. And some products as well. And then I also have this view of resources, which is for files, which is just a bunch of random stuff. Like, for example, I keep fonts that I enjoy, backgrounds that I like using and don't want to lose, colors that I often use. So that's what that's for. Then I have my media library, which um, doesn't show the articles to read, but it shows books. Oh, this is wrong. This is a movie. So it shows books I want to read, movies I want to see, TV shows I want to watch, podcasts I'm currently watching, and then this has a really long list of articles, courses, videos that I still have to read or do or watch. And then these are a little bit different. They don't really pull in from any databases. Like for example, this is lists. So I have wish list, gift ideas, just random pages. Um, this is my travel page. This does pull in from um, my projects database because my trips go into my projects. I, this is not filtered correctly, but that's okay. So, and then in there, I will have a travel itinerary. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, so when I add a new trip, I can embed a Google map, can add a packing list, I can add to-dos for when I'm in this space, and then I have um, a place to fill in my itinerary. So let's delete that. We're not doing that. Uh, and then I have this home section, which is really uh, super random. This is, uh, for example, my interior de interior design inspiration. So when I open this up, I have a few of my pinned database. I just throw some pretty pictures that I like. So that is really uh, what my Notion uh, is set up like. It's a little bit more intricate uh, with connections from areas to Knowledge Lab to projects. Um, that would take a little bit too long to explain, but I can definitely do a video on that. Uh, but in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Bye!